Hey, how are you doing? In this video, I'm going to show you the Mr. FPGA based retro game console that I built using the DE10 Nano FPGA dev board. The DE10 Nano is a development board featuring an Intel, formerly Altera, Cyclone 5 FPGA designed for hardware and software integration. It includes an ARM Cortex A9 dual core processor, allowing for both high performance computing and real time control. The Mr. FPGA is an open source project that recreates classic gaming consoles, computers, and arcade systems using FPGA technology for high accurate hardware emulation. It runs on a DE10 Nano board, leveraging the FPGA to replicate original hardware behavior rather than using traditional software emulation. So if you're into retro gaming and the Mr. FPGA project, you've probably seen a ton of enclosure boxes and shells out there. From simple cases to highly customized design that replicate the look of old consoles. But today I want to show you something unique. I've taken a step further and built my very own custom Mr. FPGA system housed in a video game shell that adds a whole new layer of nostalgia and creativity. So let me walk you through how I made this, the inspiration behind the design and why it stands out from the rest. Now for those who might not know, the Dendi was a Famicom clone console made by Stiepler, hugely popular in Russia and other parts of Eastern Europe during the 90s. The Dendi holds a special place in gaming history, bringing 8-bit gaming to regions that didn't have easy access to the original Famicom. So when I decided to build a custom MISA system, I knew this shell would be a perfect fit, not just for functionality but also to pay homage to a unique part of the gaming culture. Now, before I could fit the Mr. FPGA inside, I had to carefully disassemble the Dendi console. It wasn't too difficult, but the, since this, uh, the cell is over 30 years old, I had to be gentle with some of the plastic parts to avoid any cracks or damage. After the disassembly, when I looked at the components, I found that it is actually Nintendo on a chip system and not made out of discrete CPU and PPU parts. After taking it apart, I did a careful examination of the dimensions inside the shell. I wanted to make sure I could build a complete Mr. system without needing to modify the shell itself. That meant reusing the original cutouts for the controller ports and the real I.O. ports as much as possible. After disassembling the PCB, we found that the Dendi console was powered by a UM6561F-2 NES on a chip system. It was a PAL machine, designed to work with PAL TV systems which were standard in Russia and other parts of Eastern Europe. One of the cool things about reusing this shell is that I wanted to preserve the authenticity of the original design while upgrading the tech inside. So I made sure the original cutouts for the controller ports and rear I.O. ports would be repurposed to fit the Mr. system, keeping the retro aesthetic intact. Now to make everything fit perfectly, I actually designed new PCBs for both the front and the rear section of the chassis. This wasn't a one-shot deal, it took me multiple iterations to get everything just perfectly right. Each iteration helped me to refine the layout and ensure all the ports and components would align without needing to cut or modify the original shell. What you are seeing now is the PCB design process in a CAD application. As I worked on the design, I added crucial components like the USB hub and the I2S digital audio, which are essential for the MISTER system. Additionally, I integrated 
a THS7374 amp to enable full CVBS and S-Video output for the Mr.'s YC cores. So the system can support retro analog video formats alongside the modern digital HDMI output. This combination brings both old and new display options together in a single system which makes this custom Mr. build even more versatile. Once the design was finalized, I sent the PCBs off to be manufactured by JLC PCB in China. The process was straightforward. I uploaded the bomb and the CPL directly to their site. The user interface made it incredibly easy to get the SMD assembly done and the turnaround time was pretty quick. Soon enough, the finished PCBs arrived and they were exactly what I needed to move forward with the build. I have to say, JLC PCB did an amazing job with the quality of the boards. Their precision and attention to detail in the SMD assembly really helped us bring this project to life without any hassle. After receiving the partially assembled PCBs, I needed to add a few through-hole components to complete the build. These included connectors and other parts that could be surface mounted during the SMD assembly. With some careful soldering, I got everything in place, ensuring the PCB was fully ready for integration into the Dendi shell. That's it for this video, but in the next one, I will be putting everything together, completing the system and closing up the shell to show you the final fully assembled custom Mr. Build. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next part. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.